He was going through some things, and um, it, it was worrying me. Keisha Cole appears to have hinted at the real reason why Yaheim abruptly left the music industry with no explanation. So what exactly did she say? In a raw and unfiltered rant, R&B singer Keisha Cole shed light on the harsh realities of the music industry, revealing how artists were often betrayed and exploited by those within the business. With poignant insights and direct quotes, Cole's revelation served as a wake-up call to fans and fellow artists alike. Cole, known for her soulful voice and heartfelt lyrics, didn't hold back as she delved into the darker side of the industry. In her impassioned speech, she highlighted the pervasive issue of exploitation and manipulation that artists faced, particularly when it came to their creative work. One of the key points Cole addressed was the lack of respect for artists' creative autonomy. She expressed her frustration at having her music and personal experiences used without her consent, stating, You telling them what you went through, and then they take a song that you created as an artist, and as an artist that's already established, that it a little different for me. This sentiment reflected a common struggle among artists who found their stories co-opted and repackaged by industry insiders for profit. Cole's words served as a reminder of the importance of respecting artists' agency and ensuring they had control over their own narratives. Moreover, Cole shed light on the emotional toll of navigating an industry that often prioritized profit over the well-being of its artists. She described feeling betrayed and disheartened by those she trusted, lamenting, People really like to be mean, and then, and then, when I wake up out of my slumber and, and start getting going, get mad and going ham. This candid admission exposed the emotional vulnerability that artists endured in an environment where loyalty was often fleeting and genuine support was hard to come by. Cole's willingness to speak out about her experiences served as a rallying cry for greater transparency and accountability within the industry. In addition to exposing the industry's betrayals, Cole's rant also underscored the importance of finding one's voice and asserting oneself in the face of adversity. She recounted a period where she struggled to find her artistic footing, particularly after getting married, admitting, I really kind of lost my voice because I was going through so much. This admission of vulnerability humanized Cole and highlighted the pressures artists faced to maintain a facade of happiness and success, even when they were struggling internally. In any case, it seems Keisha's words resonate with what happened to music sensation Yaheim. For context, Yaheim Hoagland went from living in the projects to releasing platinum albums. With a voice reminiscent of a young Teddy Pendergrass and Luther Vandross, Yaheim told Vibe magazine he marketed himself off Mary J. Blige, and it worked. He was on his way to becoming one of the best R&B soul singers of his generation. He even snagged three Grammy nominations in 2010. But throughout the years, the New Jersey native's popularity has diminished. Here's what happened to Yaheim. Yaheim was born in New Brunswick, New Jersey, and was raised in the Memorial Parkway public housing project. He told Dub CNN that growing up in the projects was a disaster. When he was two years old, his father passed away. His mom, Julie Hoagland, raised Yaheim and his two brothers with some help from their tight-knit family that included his grandfather, the late soul singer Hoagie Lands. He told Dub CNN that while growing up, he got into a lot of trouble in the neighborhood by following in the footsteps of the older guys. He got locked up on a charge, and that's when he really began contemplating the direction of his life. One day, he headed to a recording studio with some of the guys from his neighborhood. Yaheim hopped into the booth and sang a rendition of Luther Vandross's Never Too Much over a club beat. Everyone loved the track, and he told Essence it encouraged him to leave the streets behind and focus on his singing. At the age of 15, he performed the Luther Vandross song, A House Is Not A Home, at the Apollo Theater. He was crowned the winner three times. After his riveting performance, he just knew he was on his way to becoming a star. Multiple industry execs were reaching out to him in hopes of having him signed to their label. However, none of the deals panned out, and maybe it was for the best. When he turned 16, he experienced the greatest heartbreak when his mother, Julie Hoagland, passed away. Yaheim slipped back into old habits and got locked up over and over again during a six-year time period. Some people think what happened to Yaheim has a lot to do with grief. Perhaps he never truly got over the loss of his beloved mother. His life completely changed when his demo landed in the hands of DJ K. Gee of Naughty by Nature. Yaheim was signed to K. Gee's Divine Mill Records and released his first album, Ghetto Love, in 2001. 
With his soulful voice paired with his baggy clothes and diamond chains, he was affectionately labeled the thug of R&B. In 2002, he released Still Ghetto, which included the platinum song, Put That Woman First. Yaheim said the song was inspired by his own relationships and the relationships his mom went through. Fans were connecting with his raw lyrics and his powerful voice, and they couldn't wait for him to come back with a third album. But what happened to Yaheim behind the scenes would cause him to temporarily put his career on hold. On June 14, 2004, the R&B artist was outside of a 7-Eleven convenience store in Hillsborough Township, New Jersey, when he was approached by an officer. He was charged with having 50 grams or less of weed in his car and for resisting arrest. Yaheim was also sentenced to 90 days behind bars. The R&B singer appealed the conviction in 2005, and a judge tossed out his charges after it was discovered the officer didn't have the right to search his vehicle. He was still placed under two years of probation, was ordered to attend an anger management program, and was required to write an apology letter to the officer for acting out at the time of his arrest. In the end, Yaheim was just happy that the drug charge was reversed. His troubles were far from over though. In 2005, he was driving his luxury vehicle when he was hit by a tractor trailer. His car was totaled and years after the accident, he told R&B Philly website that he was still recovering from his injuries. He would have good days and bad days, and he would sometimes experience a bad twitch in his neck. He visited a chiropractor, but because he was always so busy handling his career, he never gave his body the opportunity to fully heal. He built a recording studio inside his New Jersey house and began writing and co-producing his third album, entitled Ghetto Classics. He told Dub CNN website he picked that name because he loved the ghetto so much. The album was released in 2006. It continued with the theme of chronicling inner city life. It became his first number one album after it sold over 150,000 copies in its first week. In 2007, he left Divine Mill Records behind and signed with Atlantic. Under his new contract, he was asked to record the DJ Don't remix alongside Gerald Levert for Tyler Perry's film, Why Did I Get Married? That same year, he released his fourth album, The Makings of a Man. His song never peaked at number 76 on the Billboard Hot 100, and it appeared that people were growing tired of Yaheim's music offerings. He told Billboard magazine in 2007 that he was going to star in a Paramount film based on a true story. As of 2019, that movie has yet to be released. Music was still his number one passion, and he told Billboard he planned on being a professional singer for at least the next 30 years. So he headed back into the studio to work on his next project. In 2010, he released the album Another Round, which included the hit song Finding My Way Back. The heartfelt track, which borrowed elements from early 70s soul music, was a fan favorite. Even though the song only reached number 95 on the Billboard Hot 100, Yaheim received three Grammy nominations. 2010 brought more issues for the singer. Just months after another round was released, he was pulled over in New Jersey for driving 65 miles per hour in a 35 miles per hour zone. Officers could smell a strong odor of marijuana from the vehicle. After Yaheim gave them consent to search, they located marijuana underneath his driver's seat. According to NewJersey.com, this incident led many to believe the artist had bigger demons he was battling. And just like that, he disappeared from the limelight again. In 2013, he reappeared with the album Appreciation Day. Yaheim told Magic 102.3 radio station that the title track Age Ain't a Factor was inspired by a lost love. Sadly, the album was a flop. He relaunched his own record label called Julie's Dream Music Group in 2014. His label signed a deal in conjunction with BMG Records, and in 2016 he released his seventh studio album, entitled Struggle Love. Yaheim debuted a new look which didn't go over well with the public. Charlemagne to God of The Breakfast Club crowned him the donkey of the day for his new hairstyle. Yaheim tried to defend himself with a bunch of clapbacks, but that only led to more ridicule from online users. The R&B musician made a comment on his Instagram, encouraging people to not fall victim to groupthink. Basically, he thought it was ridiculous how people jump on the bandwagon to hate someone just because the majority of people dislike him. But it wasn't the first time he was bashed online. When he showed up to Whitney Houston's funeral in a bright blue tux, he was clowned all over the internet. Yaheim was also reportedly denied access inside, but he still received a lot of love from fans who were standing outside of the event. Expressing himself through music is one of Yaheim's greatest talents. He told All Hip Hop he made good money performing his songs on the road. However, he got paid basically nothing for all the albums he has released. 
This seems like a common theme for older musicians in the industry. Maybe they weren't as business savvy or they didn't have people in their corner to help them make the right decisions. But so many old school artists have stated they weren't fairly compensated for all their hard work, like Adina Howard, for example. Anyway, Jaheim told Page Six in 2017 he was happy with his new position in the industry. He was still running his own label and had better control over his music. He said, I love the business, I just don't like certain people in the business. Pushing away from the industry also brought about a new lifestyle change. In 2018, he revealed lighter colored hair and a smaller frame. Again, he was mocked for his appearance and everyone was wondering, what happened to Jaheim? He took to his Instagram to say his new look had nothing to do with drugs nor alcohol. In fact, he had given all of those things up some years prior. He attributed his weight loss to his new meat-free diet. He even shared a cooking tutorial that included whole banana peels. Yeah, pass. Since stepping out on the scene, Jaheim has been questioned about his S preference. During an interview with Sway at Hot 97, he began throwing equipment around when his alleged relationships with other men were brought into question. When All Hip Hop asked him why he reacted so strongly, he said he was young at the time, and he now realizes that people were only saying those things to make him act out of character. Rumors about Jaheim's behavior have floated around the industry for years. Singer Selena Johnson said she almost got into a physical altercation with him back in 2005 over a song credit, and radio host Russ Parr said when he asked Jaheim to stop talking over other people and dominating their interview, Jaheim allegedly knocked over the microphone and hit a table before storming out. It seems like all the artist wants is the respect that he deserves. He told Essence magazine, I want to be known for giving something to the game. And his fans are ready and willing to support him all the way. Sadly, what happened to Jaheim has a lot to do with the business side of the industry. In June 2019, he was reportedly a no-show three nights in a row at a St. Louis music festival. With with no official explanation given, concertgoers were offered refunds. So what happened to Jaheim and what is he up to these days? He was featured on Angie Stone's 2019 album Full Circle, but it remains to be seen when he will deliver another studio album of his own. In July 2019, he released a statement on his Instagram, stating he won't be performing anytime soon. He wrote, I am changing a few things, then we shall meet again. With over 5 million records sold worldwide and numerous Grammy, Soul Train, and American Music Award nominations, what happened to Jaheim breaks the hearts of many fans. He has countless songs and albums that speak for how talented he is. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.